You have Sam from WSYC in Pennsylvania on the phone. Right on. Hi, Sam. Hi, David. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing personally absolutely fantastic because, uh, and I'm going to just nerd out here for a moment, and then I promise to be professional for the rest of the interview, but the Pixies <laughs> are my favorite band, so this is a huge moment for me. You have good taste, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I got 10 to 15 minutes here with you, and I'm going to do my best to fit in as many questions as I can. Real quick before we start the interview, I was planning on recording this for the station and for social media, and I just want your okay on that, if that's okay with you. Sure, please. All right, cool. Um, so first question is that the Pixies recently released the album Head Carrier, which has received really good reviews. And uh, I want to know just for you, what track off that album do you think stands up, uh, stands out the most to you? To me, Sam, I think there's a song called All I Think About Now. And the crazy thing about that, if I can, I'll try to go quick with it, is all the songs on Head Carrier, except for that one, we had spent seven weeks in pre-production. We, uh, we had a list of those songs that we learned over seven weeks, and we honed them. We were confident. We knew, knew everything. We had three weeks in the studio. We did all those songs on the list and three weeks. We had two days left in the studio. And Paz Lenchantin, our new, I wouldn't say new, but our three-year-old bass player, who we're recording with the first time uh, with Paz as well for Head Carrier. She says, I have an idea for something. And she gets everyone in the apartment above the, the studios, and we just jam on this song she has. And we worked it out. We went down the next morning. I did the drums. We did the bass. We did the whole thing, tracked it in a second. And it turns out that's my favorite song. And the, the most ironic thing about it is, it's the it's a it's a Pixies classic sounding song the way it is. Mm -hmm. But Paz wrote it. Our new bass player. <laughs> yeah. Um. Spe speaking of all I think about now, actually, it's been uh pretty well discussed that that song is kind of a a thank you note or some kind of message to former bass player Kim Deal. And I was wondering if she'd been in contact with you or anybody in the band over the song in any way, shape, or form. No, I haven't heard. I haven't not heard anything. I don't know if she's heard it, or uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But hopefully, you know, it's all good. It's all and then nothing, nothing bad or anything. So I'm sure it's all cool. Um, on the album Head Carrier, you switched to producer Tom Delgady, I believe I'm pronouncing that correct, instead of using uh, Gil Norton, who had produ produced multiple records for the album. What was the reasoning behind switching producers? Oh, well, what had happened was um, we we were going to do a new album. We uh, knew it was time to do another record. And uh, at this point, we talked to been the band for over two years. And it just seemed like a logical thing. Having a new bass player, going in the studio with a new bass player, it just seemed, why don't we just start all anew and just make it uh, make it interesting. So, um, let's do this. Oh, and, um, sorry, <laughs> one second, I'm just moving out of here. And... Where am I going? And uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the question with Tom. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking something else. Uh, it's all right. Um, uh, what was it? Um, you you decided that you wanted to start uh, over. It was new bass player. You wanted to start from scratch. Yes, yes, that was it. So we, um, oh gosh, and we um, we looked at new. Uh, we thought it would be great with a new producer to start this whole thing brand new. So we looked at a different. Uh, a bunch of different producers, and uh, Tom's name came up, and we met with him. Wonderful guy. He was a Pixies fan. It just we liked the, the music he's been doing so far, Royal Blood and Killing Joke. And it was just it just it just seemed to, to work. And we went in the studio. Or actually, I shouldn't say we that was when we went in the studio. We still had different times that we met with Tom doing pre-production, and at least two occasions where he would meet us in a place, and we would just work over the songs, and he would say, I like this, uh, and he actually told us, get rid of that song, don't do that. And, you know, there's not many Pixie songs that we've thrown out, you know? <laughs> and we've actually thrown out, I think, two songs that uh, Tom suggested. you just got to give it up to him. And I, I, the thing of a producer is really, they have to be an ambassador. And mm -hmm. you have to be able to be tactful and handle a band. And Tom was wonderful at that, as well as his, his, his recording process. Um, speaking of the recording process, uh, Head Carrier 
at least to me, I, you, I don't know how you would feel about it. Um, Head Carrier sounds almost like a callback to the traditional Pixie sound, but with a much more mature feel to it. Uh, what was the feel when record when recording the album? How did uh, things flow while you were in the studio? Um, I think it went very well because the reason I said it is we had we had seven weeks of pre-production. It was a luxury for us. I mean, I haven't had that luxury since uh, Super Rose. Because in certain, during Sifarosa, we knew those songs. We played them in Boston, and Boston, and we we honed them. We knew how to play them. So, having seven weeks of pre-production for Head Carrier, it was it was a joy. It was an absolute joy because going in the studio. After, you know, if I go back um, after Sifarosa, from uh, from Doolittle, Boston over, and uh, Troy Plamon, and they all got har- harder and harder to do because they were more. They were becoming quicker and quicker. So to really be confident and and it just put the pressure on uh, coming up with parts of things uh, uh, much quicker. So again, head carrier. This was a luxury having so much time to really own these songs and go in. So when we went in, we had three weeks and we we did it. We did it under three weeks, and I was and I was amazed. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just a joy. I think it was the, probably the the funnest time I've had since. Probably do little of Sir Rosa. I mean, in the studio, the, the whole experience for me. I think it could have been the grandest. Yeah. So to me, it sounds like because it's very well known, well documented that towards the end of the Pixies recording, or well, the Pixies' initial run from the late '80s to the early '90s, uh, tensions between the bands sort of started to build. But it sounds this time like you guys have reverted back to, you know, back when the band first started out, and the the whole feel of the band in general right now is very lighthearted, and you guys are, you know, uh, enjoying being the Pixies again, which I to me it sounds like what's really helping improve the quality of the music. Would you, you like to expand on that at all? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, it definitely can. Um, I mean, the, the, the way the Pixies works is Charles always, uh, he presents us the song, and we just jam on it. That's the way it's always been. If I could do better, I would, but Charles, is, he, he does it perfect. And I know that we're, I mean, it, it, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I know that the, a lot of these songs could be said as, as, as older sounding songs, but maybe the, the speed of it or the punkiness or something like that. But then again, I, it's, it's to me, it's a, it's another Pixies album. It's just like I mean, I couldn't compare this with 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 Bossa Nova, and I can't compare Trouble Moon with Surfer Rosa. They're all different for, mm-hmm. for what they are. It's just some of these might have held it back some earlier things, but. Um, I can't give an explanation as far as the uh, the demeanor of the band, how we're getting along, if that had anything to play with it. Okay. Um, um, yeah, no form. I, I don't know if I don't think there's a formula. It's just the, the way things pop around from around, around the band. And uh, one thing I've, I've actually been wondering: uh, you talk about how Charles presents the songs. To the best of my knowledge, you've only sung two songs in Pixies history, being "La La Love You" and "Make Believe." Has there been any interest or attempt to get you to sing lead on another song? Um, uh, I haven't been asked yet. Um, I'm sure if, if anything that Charles feels that uh, that I that that I could do, uh, I'm sure, and uh, I would. Yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, nothing yet. No, that hasn't <laughs> been talked around. I just do. I'm doing a lot more backing vocals. I found. Um, Indie, Indie City, I did some, and I really didn't do a lot of all the 50s years, maybe the Shen on the Debaser and things like that. But, um, yeah, there's a lot more backing back vocals that, um, on Head Carrier than I think in comparison to uh, uh, Indie City. Hmm. Um, and now I want to move a little bit away from uh, the, the new album and more just into you, you personally as far as how your career's turned out. Uh, it's really well noted that Rush is your favorite band. Is it, is it still to this day? Uh, I'd probably replace it with Steely Dan. That'll make it <laughs> Really? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, Steely Dan. Okay, well, r- this question would involve both those. Rush, Steely Dan, uh, I know that you are also a decent Led Zeppelin fan. Um, in your career as a musician, have you gotten to meet any of these artists that you've looked up to? Like, what's, the, what's a person that you've met that just kind of almost gave you a little bit of the starstruck feeling? Uh, um, well, Bowie, Bowie was, Bowie was definitely up there. Um, I think Bowie the most of all, probably the most of all. I think yeah, I was the most starstruck. I think he, 
athlete, man. Because it was like, I was a huge fan. It was a very nice guy. You know, I was, I was definitely, uh, I felt easier uh, after a while of, of, of talking to him, not as shocked. <laughs> where I could be normal. Uh, but it was still, yeah, he, he, yeah, that was the first one. But uh, generally, I, 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 not a lot that I'm, I'm really, I, uh, I can't say it. it's interesting. Because my, myself, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm just Dave, I play in a band. I'm not really, <laughs> I don't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. Ever. And I try not to think about it with a lot of musicians. I think that they're regular people as well. So, But sometimes I'm overtaken by it. Things like guys like Bowie. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine Bowie especially would be somebody who's uh, almost a very intimidating person to meet for the first time. Yeah. Um. Along with being a drummer, you also had a career in magic, and I was just wondering what what spawned your interest in magic and becoming a magician. Uh, it's it was funny because when the Pixies uh, broke up. Uh, I I uh, I kind of gave up drums. I spent a, a few years doing things with uh, in music, and then I eventually gave it up. And I I made the wise career choice of becoming a professional magician. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I don't I don't know the a correlation. I think it was just something. The reason that it happened was I saw a trick. I think this is just my my way of thinking. Is I saw a trick, it blew me away, and I got it. I was just obsessed. By it had to learn everything, books and videos, classes and everything for years uh, until I started doing magic professionally. And um, it, I, when I think about it, I, I was actually trying to plot how to make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. I was doing that thing. I was doing a stage show, which I developed and, and did all that stuff. But it, when I look back in hindsight, it's like, wow, it was... It's a lot of work with a magic show, and it's. I don't. I think if I was, if I went back to being an electronic engineer, it would have been a lot of, it would have been a better career choice for me. But I, I still enjoy magic very much, and I do it kind of close up magic, thing, that kind of stuff. So. Oh, that's really interesting. So you're you're more of a sleight of hand kind of guy. Uh, that's I think my forte. I mean, that's what I love most. But I mean, like I was saying, I had a, I had a stage show, but that was a, a way to make a living at it. I mm-hmm. think yeah, years ago. That's the. Uh, but I enjoy, I absolutely love, I love close-up magic, um, you know, objects, or so, something that's just with a very intimate setting. It's much more powerful than doing a stage show. That's interesting. Um, speaking, uh, transitioning into live shows and stuff, uh, and going back into the music of the Pixies, it's it's almost night and day, yeah. the difference between the popularity of the Pixies in Europe and in America. Because even though you guys are pretty internationally popular now, Europe still, I think, has just a... A, a much better liking to you currently. And, um, you know, is there a different feel when you transition from playing, you know, the shows that you've been playing over in Europe and Italy and Spain and uh, England, and then coming over here and playing the shows that you played in California? Well, you know, no, I, no, I should say that I think America is... is, is, is it, it, it seems somewhat equal sometimes on a certain level now. I think it's just been over the years. I think wouldn't think back in the... The first, first incarnation of the Pixies, there was a definite uh, discrepancy. But now it's now the U.S. In, in comparison, I think it's caught up really. Um, and again, it's all regional, and, sh- and the areas you play from city to city will change, and it's the same in Europe and country to country. But um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's becoming a better playing field, a more even playing field as far as uh, the Pixies. Popularity, I think now they're coming over in the United States. Um, I, I've only got you for about th- a couple more minutes. I, I got three more questions. We'll try and blow through them as fast as possible. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of upcoming shows, you guys announced your first ever dates in South Africa. Are have you gotten excited to get to play those shows? Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting because for the Pixies, we've we've been around supposedly for thirty years. I think it wasn't all successful, but um, it's interesting when you go to new places. And this will be a uh, very far away new place that we've never been, and we're very excited. Um, it seems um, it seems they like us down there, so <laughs> it's it. This will be a very interesting trip. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, and this is kind of a, a very in depth uh, a que- I shouldn't say in depth, but a question that might, might require a bit of look into the future. And it's a question that I'm very sad to ask is that one day, and I hope it's a very long time from now, the Pixies will play their final show. Um, 
Where would you where would you personally want that final show to take place? Would you like to return to the hometown of Boston or would you like to play the O2 Theater in London that you seem to sell out in minutes whenever you announce a show there? Or is there some other place that you would prefer playing? Like where would you like the final Pixies concert to take place? Yeah. Um it would be tough to it would be tough to do a Boston or maybe a London or something like that because even though we call London our, our second home in a way, I, it would be better if it was a, a what would you call it, a neutral place, <laughs> I think, <laughs> that where everyone could enjoy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, it, it's a tough one, Sam. Uh, uh, that's okay. We can, we can, I'm certainly not going to force you to answer. We can move along if you'd like. <laughs> okay, please, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um... And then just well, the final question for me really would be, what is one thing as a musician or in your life that you have yet to do that you would like to do if given the chance? Ah. Uh, musician. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little tough one. I, I wouldn't want to destroy my drums because I, 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 I like my drums. <laughs> oh, well, I, it certainly doesn't have yeah, to be... I, I'd have to move on, yeah. It certainly doesn't have to be something like in place of being a musician, just some life like going skydiving or you know something that you have just yet to have the chance to do. Oh, one thing that I'd love to do, if, if it was one thing, would be uh, gold hunting, metal detector, uh, maybe in the outback and somewhere in Australia or something like that, or even up north in Alaska. That would be fun to do. Would you, you said gold hunting? Yeah, I've been a metal detector since I was 10 years old. And I, that's one thing that I haven't done is, is gold hunting, um, proper gold hunting with a metal detector. Wow, no, that, that does sound like that would be very interesting. Um with, with metal, how, what do you know of any big finds that you might have found with your metal detector? Anything in particular that's come up? Oh yeah. Um, well, growing up in New England, I have coins from probably uh, the early 1720s. Um, actually, they're British farthings and things, but they were um, early currency or coinage, uh, all the way up through gold and silver, early coppers, all the way up through uh, now. I have tons of tons of old coins. Um, when I moved to California, there wasn't much, uh, not old history. Um, on the terrain, so I went into the ocean. I have underwater detectors, and I go into water, and I have tons of, uh, oh, God, wedding rings, engagement oh, wow. rings, wedding bands, huh. tons of jewelry. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's probably my, my biggest hobby that I do. So. Oh, that's, that's, that's nice. Um, w- one final question, and then I promise to let you go after this, is uh, the, the song oh, um, yeah. um, Chagala- um Chagalaga on the album head carrier features very intense drums and it almost comes off with a certain emotion and i know that you talked about when you guys go in and record you kind of just jam it out and feel it out but do you guys sometimes try and look at the emotion or presentation of a song and structure how you play around that yeah um well it's funny what you asked that that was, the, that was uh, an early song that we played live and uh, live a couple of times early way early this year and the way I did it was kind of, um, I, can't, I can't explain it, but it was very basic compliment to the way I'd play that song. Mm-hmm. And then when we went and did a pre-production with Tom hearing it, he thought I was just messing around where I was doing a piece like this, a song called we do piece like day and time that would do, but it's rolling off the floor, Tom, and stuff like that, and the kick is just really, really busy, it's just moving along. Mm-hmm. And he liked that. He liked it so much that it's now, it's almost all the way through the song, that kind of da-da-da-da-da-da, even through Joe's guitar solo it goes. Yeah. And, um, but that's, yeah, that's how that does came, came around. That was an interesting, uh, I know I can remember that one. And it, it, it does compliment. I like it because it's, it's fun to play and I like that Easter kind of feel. So it moves. So, yeah. Well, I want to thank you once again very much for all your time. This has been a super awesome honor for me to get to interview uh, one of the members of my favorite bands. And I really hope you come around the Philadelphia area sometime this year because I'll be 100% in the front row of one of your shows. All right, on Sam. Well, Sam, it was a pleasure speaking with you, and I, I do appreciate it so much. So thank you. Yeah, it was great speaking to you too, and uh, hopefully I'll get to talk to you again sometime. All right, cool, man. I'll see you soon, all right? Yep, t- take care.